What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of the Monday Update. I'm here still in Milwaukee, my lovely hotel room as you can see. We just yes. finished the JVA MKE Jamboree this weekend and it was a blast. It was tiring, but it was a blast. Yes. Did you get any Super Bowl fun in? We did actually. It wrapped up late as club tournaments do but not too late we saw the second half which was all you needed to see of the super bowl this year so uh, yeah exactly well let me give you a quick little rundown of what went down in men's college volleyball we had the byu ucla matchup with two nights of play and the first night was we definitely think these have been the most epic matches we've seen at all this season so uh, UCLA was missing Jake Arnitz and middle Mitch Stahl due to injury, so they had that to face that battle a little bit, but BYU wins the first two sets, then UCLA rallied and won the next two, so big, big match there. Yeah, BYU winning it in five sets. I actually tried to watch the beginning of this match, fell asleep, but I heard in the recap that it was seriously one of the most epic matches of the year. BYU, yeah. you know, coming out really strong, but UCLA finding a way to rally even though they were missing those two players. Didn't get the W in the end. I'm sure the Bruins were disappointed about that, and I think that momentum shift really hurt them the second night when they played, and then BYU won in three that night. Yeah, and we talked about how that might be a tough matchup with Ben Patch just being such a dominant player there, and then a little bit of undersized with UCLA's pinners, and Ben Patch lived up to expectations. He played amazing with 28 kills in Hitting 422, 11 digs, three blocks in a five set match is really impressive stats. Yeah, for sure. And the next night, not too shabby either. 13 kills, yep. hitting 458, four digs. It's pretty solid. Yep. I think the thing that really stood out to me in that box score the second night was UCLA really struggling with their offense. Hagen Smith, who's one of their two setters in the 6 2 setter opposites, he was their leading hitter with 10 kills. And yeah. nothing against him, but, like, your setter opposite should not be your leading offensive producer. You know, that's how you know things aren't really going it's an, right. Yeah, tough night, tough matchup for sure. Yeah. And then we had a big, big upset. Stanford loses this week. Kind of a shock. Didn't expect that with, with who they were playing. With uh, CSUN, Cal State. Yeah, Northridge coming out and getting the sweep even. So that yep. was really surprising to me. Also, USC upsetting UC Irvine, which was kind mm -hmm. of nuts. They used, USC recently added uh, Gianluca Grassa, who's a Brazilian native. He transferred mm -hmm. in at the end of January, which is very rare. I feel like you don't see right. a new player being added to a team. And I think he really made a difference in that match. But then their second match of the weekend, they lose to UCSD which yeah. is very unexpected. UCSD, kind of one of those teams in the MPSF that's really struggled the past couple of years. Yeah, so to have a big win, turn around, and not perform that same way, they have to definitely go back and kind of reassess this week yeah, what happened. I'm having trouble figuring out what's going on with USC and if they are a team that contend for big wins or if they're just super inconsistent. I don't know. Yeah, well, they got time, got time to maybe level out, but definitely a little all over the map right now. Yeah. For sure. Anything super exciting? Give us a quick rundown of what happened. What did you saw this week, this yeah. weekend at the uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin? Yeah. So, MN Select has got to be the top story. Their teams just pretty much dominated all the top divisions. They won 17-18 Open, and they actually had their 18-1 and 18-2 teams playing in the final. And then they also won 16 Open and 14 Open. And any teams they had in the other divisions were definitely up there in the top finishers. So they were very impressive. Milwaukee Sting, too, had a really good weekend. And for the most part, they had their teams playing up divisions, which makes it even more impressive that they did so well. Their, um, 16, their top 16 team was playing in the 17-18, got a chance to talk to a couple of them. And, you know, they just had a great attitude about it. They, you know, they beat a couple 17-18 teams in pool, and I'm sure that felt really good. And then they played the top MN Select 18s team, and they got it handed to them a little bit. But afterwards, yeah. they were just like, we hope we see them again in the playoffs, you know? Yeah. We, they're one of the best teams in the country, and they just loved having a chance to face them and see how they stood up against older girls. That's fun. It's like they had that great mentality, especially if these aren't qualifying tournaments. These are just really the purposes to get experience and you're putting them up in higher age groups, they're getting that experience. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. And after facing that 18-1 team, I'm sure they go to AAU Nationals and they're facing other 16s teams and they're just way more prepared for it. Definitely. Awesome. Well, cool. Well, um, get home nice and safe. Weather is a little crummy here. But awesome. <laughs> excited to see you back in Austin. Yeah. All right. And we will see you guys later in the week. Yep. Bye, everybody.